before I speak and before they give me the recommendation, does your doc daughter have any documented mental health issues or behavioral health issues? You have to unmute. I'm sorry. Um, no, when she was in school, when she was placed on IEP in school, um, they had her on a behavioral plan as well, but outside of that, no. Okay, all right, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. John VA, recommendation. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. the state was recommending 12, mi 12 months to serve two days, credit for the time that she's already served, the balance to be uh, probated with a fine of $300, Family Violence Intervention uh, Program, 40 hours of community service, and no contact with the victim, uh, Ms. Trimble. Uh, counts two, three, and four would uh, merge. Count five would be 12 months probation to run concurrent with count one, uh, plus any uh, restitution that the victim was requesting. But I believe I understand that she's not requesting any restitution. Okay. How old is um, Ms. Walker? How old are you? 21. All right, Ms. Trimble, where's Ms. Walker living now? Um, She lives three hours away from me. Okay, in good. In Atlanta, I live in Pooler. Okay. Um, however, however, yesterday when I had spoke with the victim advocate because she had asked me if I had wanted um, no contact, and I told her that that's not what I wanted. I wanted to have contact because she has a son that I do have a relationship with that I would like to remain in contact with. So um, the, no, the no contact part, um, I, if, if, my, if, if my opinion matters in that part, the no contact part, um, I didn't want. I wanted to remain. I wanted to have contact because we haven't had an incident with each other since that since that day. All right, Ms. Walker, I'm gonna hear from your attorney and then we're gonna have a conversation. Mr. White? Mm -hmm. your, your Honor, I just ask you accept the plea, Your Honor. Ms. Walker, you're a mom, so you're gonna experience a lot of what your mama has experienced. And if you're, yeah. if, uh, oh, uh -uh. listen to me, if you oh allow God. your oh child yesterday. to treat you, it's not that's not I, even ma'am. Stuff happen with parents. You're here so for whatever I Walker. say you're here for. I'm trying to hear. All right, right. I'm not accepting Ms. the Walker. plea. I'm not accepting the plea. She's gonna do jail time. If she takes a plea before me, she's gonna do jail time. What do you mean? Because it's like you telling me if I'm she, a mom and you didn't. keep talking. Ms. 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 Walker, do more this, jail time. I didn't mean this. Just listen, Shamane. ma'am, please. Miss Val, Miss Camille, I need a contempt order. Twenty days. 20 oh days. My God. So Charmaine, just be quiet. This is what I'm everybody was talking to you about. I'm just okay. be quiet. Just listen to her and be quiet. Just be quiet. You're never going to like anything that everybody says to you. It doesn't matter. No, just she be grown, quiet. Miss Trimble. See, she grown. No, see, she going to learn because she I out here learn. single mom. Not, uh -uh. You Ms. 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 Walker, you got your 20 days. She's so not asking you. She's not me. asking you for your side of the story. She's just asking for you to listen. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back on mute. Oh, I, I can't hear. She about to get 20 days for direct contempt before the court. And this is why you're having the problems that you're having. Because she thinks she's grown and that she doesn't have to be responsible to anybody. But I, I will tell I you that um, anybody who attacks their mother, takes their car, and then thinks that they don't have to listen to a judge who's trying to put them on the right path, that's a problem. She ain't even did, good. She ain't I'm even fit to be now. out here in, in polite society. I don't want her walking around because she's a danger to others. I don't even think she should have her child. Because if she doesn't know how to act for somebody to benefit her, she can't be a good mom. And I'm just going to say it. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, so she signed off. Bench warrant. Get it for me. I'm not playing today. She's going to learn today. If she can't control herself enough to listen while somebody is trying to talk about the behavior that got her before a judge and two days in jail, that's a problem for me. Because what I believe is this little sentence here, she not, she's going to be a problem for probation. I'm not trying to give probation officers a problem. They got enough. So she's not probation eligible. Whatever sentence y'all come up with when she comes back the next time after this bench warrant, 
it's not going to be probation. Um, I, I'm sorry, Jess, because I wasn't trying to get in no, the way of it's not what you were saying. I was just telling her to be. Wrong. I was just trying to tell her to be quiet. I, no, get, I get it. I was just trying to tell a, her to be quiet. As a mother, you're trying to save her from herself, but obviously that's not possible. But what she's not going to do is disrespect me or the process. It's not even about me, but it's about the fact that I sit in this role and I have a job to do. And she's not going to have a tantrum on, on this. Mm -mm, she's not. No, ma'am. So there's going to be a bench warrant issued from for her. Uh, she'll be picked up. You might want to put your name out there to take her child. And the next recommendation is either going to be a trial or she's going to take a plea with jail time because I'm not mm -mm, I'm not satisfied with her being on probation. I don't believe she's probation eligible. I'm not going to put that on a probation officer. Because that see, kind of attitude, I get paid enough to deal with it. They do not. Mm -mm, not mm -mm. And if I'm not going to deal with it, I'm surely not going to put it on them. No, ma'am. So um, after she finished having her little tantrum, uh, then she can figure out that I'm not playing. Your Honor, she is back on. My the phone Zoom. died. Mr. White, you may need to step into a breakout room and explain to her what she needs to do in order for me to undo what I'm about to do. Yes, Your Honor. Because she's been held in direct contempt of the court. Um. If she can, if she can, because like I said, I'm not trying to step in the way of... Mr. White, can I go into uh, a breakout room with you? Yes. She's going to put you in a breakout room. Um, I'm not trying to step in the way of... I get it, Ms. Walker, not, and I get what you're doing. Please, please don't misunderstand. I'm a mom. No, so yes, I'm I'm yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not trying to step, I'm not trying to step in that way. You're right. She, and I'm not trying yeah. to step in the way of that. I'm not trying to step in the way of that. But it's like, you know, when it comes down to her, when it comes down to her child, like I try to be, I try to be supportive and I try to, and sometimes she can. The problem is, Miss Tremble, is she's raising it. Sometimes she can't child. get it right. It and is. It's, and sometimes she can't get it right. And sometimes she, and sometimes this happens. And this she the has problem. the potential. She has the potential to get it right. And like I said, that's why I moved. That's why I had moved, you know what I'm saying? three hours away just so I wouldn't be the support system or the go-to support system because even when I do have him sometimes you know what I'm saying like I I, I can tell when he misses his mom um I don't, I don't know I've, I've tried you know what I'm saying like as a parent I've tried and Mr. I don't want to see her I don't want to see her now though she's I know. an adult and I get everything that you're saying but she's an adult and she has to face some harsh consequences. The consequences being that if you act up like this, there your child suffers. You might suffer a little right. bit, but your child is going to suffer a lot. That's the point I'm trying to make to her before she popped right. off. That was the right. point I'm trying to make for her. It is not about you anymore. It is about right. that little boy that you brought into this world that didn't ask to be right. here, but he needs stability. He needs somebody who's going to be responsible. He needs somebody who's not going to have a tantrum that's going to take right. them away from him where she has to do time while he's out there swinging in the wind. That's the point I was trying right. to make to her before and I, she and lost I know that. And I know that. And that's what every that's what we try to tell her about in this life. And I tell her, you, the, a lot of stuff can be solved if you just shut your mouth. Because you don't have to say everything that comes to mind. There's stuff that I want to say that comes to mind. But I'm also old enough to know that not everything needs to be said. And that's what that's what I was trying to say to her. I wasn't trying to get in the way of... No, ma'am, you know, I get you. I yeah, get you. That's all that I was trying to say to her. You were trying to save her from herself. But I right. get it. But Mr. Right. White knows me and he knows how I work. When she comes back, she'll be right. We're, we're going to work all of this out. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take Mr. Arandado's plea. So Walker, um, Ms. Walker. Mr. White. Your Honor, I believe Ms. Walker has something she was wishes to say to you. Ms. Walker. I apologize. Ms. Walker, you will find that life will be very, very hard when you go forward the way that you're going. I know, I, I know you don't 
think that because you feel like you know everything at this point and you need to say everything that comes out of your mouth. But I'm a whole judge and I don't get to say everything that comes into my head. I really don't. I have to censor myself so hard. Sometimes it's not even funny um, because there's a time and a place to say things. And sometimes when you're so busy talking, you're going to miss that nugget of information you need to get something better for yourself because you think you know everything. But there are people who have already walked the path that you're walking and they can give you a little bit of help or give you a shortcut, save you a little bit of hurt or time or energy. But you're not going to get that because you're so busy to popping off at the mouth. First of all, it's rude. Second of all, you're raising a whole son. And if that's the way you're going to treat him, how to treat you, treat if you, that's the way you're going to treat your mother. That's exactly how he's going to treat you. That is exactly what you're going to get back from him. Because that's the that's what you're telling him. This is how we treat mamas. This is how we treat our mother. So you're going to raise a child who, instead of going out to conquer the world and getting better than you could ever imagine for him, he's going to be in an orange jumpsuit right about the time I'm ready to retire. Because you're the, you're the example he'll be following. You don't have a car. You need to use your mama's car. But instead of going at it with an approach that says, hey, mom, I appreciate you Let me use your car, a value, very valuable asset that if something happens to her car, she may lose her job. You could lose your job and your place to stay if you don't have a car. But instead of saying, hey, mom, you know, thank you for letting me use your car. I'm going to need to use it again. So I put gas in it. I made sure I didn't leave any junk in it. You know, I just want to show you appreciation for letting me use something that's very important to you. But instead, you dis you abused it the first time. And then when she says, no, you can't use it this time, then you go berserk and spend two days in jail, leaving your child without a mama. Which seems to be easy for you because there is no decision I would make that would ever knowingly leave my child without me. I ain't going to jail for nobody because my children aren't going to be sitting there wondering where I am. And you think, oh, well, you know, they don't know. Kids know. I don't care how small your son is. He knows there's a disruption in his atmosphere. He knows if there's anger. He knows if there's an issue pending where you're not doing well or his grandmother's not doing well or he's not doing well because the force around him has changed. And so if you're going to be the kind of mama that raises a child who's going to go out and conquer the world instead of being beaten down by the world, then every once in a while, all of that talk, 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 you will have to pull that way back. You're going to have to be a little bit humble. Trust me. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I sit in this position, but I realize that it is not a position of power for me to abuse. So if somebody steps in front of me in the grocery store, you know what I do? I move back so they can get their grocery cart in front of me. Do I challenge them? No, because why? What do I gain from it? Got a whole lot to lose. When you realize what you have to lose by all that popping off at the mouth, when it becomes cognizant to you that by doing that, I threaten the welfare and safety of my son. I leave him without a mama. Man, these streets too wild for the stuff you're trying to pull. You're pulling it on your mama, but pull that out in the street. I watched somebody pull a gun and put it to a FedEx driver's head in traffic due to a traffic offense. People shooting each other for, the, for, for cutting them off in traffic, popping off at the mouth. You might want to regulate that because it's happening daily. So when you think, I don't want to hear all this, maybe it's something you need to hear. Maybe it's something you need to hear. Because the last thing you want is something to happen to you and your mama has to raise a child that she didn't ask to even have. I know she loved her grandbaby. That's why she's crying. Because she knows you, you grown, but she loves that grandbaby. But she shouldn't have to raise them because you do something stupid. I talked to way too many grandmothers who instead of living their lives, going on cruises, hanging out with their girls, living, living the best life that they can live after they have worked all these years and raised their kids. Now they're stuck raising grandchildren because their children didn't know how to act. And you are the very example of that. 
So I'm sorry you don't want to hear it, but I'm going to tell you, I feel like it's my job because I feel like I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to the mother of that child who, when you mess up, you leave him abandoned. When you mess up, you don't know who's taking care of him. When you mess up, then that baby's out there wondering where his mama is. Are we clear? Yes. And I really don't think you're a good candidate for probation. Because if you're going to pop off like that to me, I don't want to put you on probation and have some poor probation officer who has way too many cases already having to deal with your attitude because you don't feel like doing what I told you to do. Probation is a privilege. It means I am keeping track of you, but I'm allowing you to be on the outside because you can still live your life as opposed to what I really can do, which is put you in jail until I'm satisfied and then let you out and be done with the case. I don't have to worry about somebody having to monitor you. I don't have to worry about somebody having to deal with your attitude or your bad day. Because no matter what day I have, I don't bring it to work. Nobody deserves my bad day and nobody deserves yours. Nobody did it but you. Everything, every decision you make contributes to whether you have a good day or a bad day. But that ain't nobody else's fault. Everything that happened between you and your mother was choices you made. That's nobody else's fault, not mine or anybody else's. And I'll be doggone if I'm going to sit here and listen to you flip off at me like I'm the problem, like I'm the reason you're here. Personal responsibility. Once you start realizing that the choices you make are why you end up where you end up, then you'll make better choices so you can end up in a better place. I'm so clear on that. I see it all day, every day. I recognize it in myself. When you, when you make better choices, you end up in a better place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So all that popping off at the mouth at 20 years old, like you got the wisdom of somebody who has lived, you barely there. You are barely there. You don't even know. And if you continue along this path, you don't even know what's coming at you. You barely there. So I suggest for the, the strong support that your mother is to you, I suggest that you not abuse her. Because she actually wants to have no violent or harassing contact with you instead of no contact. And you know what? No contact would hurt her heart because she loves her grandbaby. But no contact would devastate you because you're going to need her. In the next 12 months, you're going to need your mama. I know it. I can predict it. I can already tell. You're going to need her more than she needs you. She's trying to save you. But I personally, I'm thinking maybe if I did no contact, that would give her a break. She wouldn't have to worry about sending you no money. She wouldn't have to worry about no panic call. She wouldn't have to worry about you coming back to, sh to uh, show up to leave the child with her because you got something to do and you don't have nobody to keep your baby. She wouldn't have to worry about any of that. She could go to the gym and work out. She could sleep late on Saturdays and Sundays. She could go and do things for herself. That money that she would be sending you, she could go on a cruise. She could do all of those things for herself instead of worrying about you for the next 12 months. That would be a vacation for her. Okay. All right. You're going to learn. You, you, you're still in that little mode of uh, my little feelings hurt, so I got to show everybody this ain't hurting me. But you're going to learn. All right. Um, I still don't feel like she's a probation candidate. I really don't. And a probation candidate, I mean, like, is she living in Clayton County? Your Honor, from my understanding, she does. She what? Does not, Your Honor. Where she live? Miss Walker. So then I'm going to have issues where she can't get to court because she don't have transportation and she got a baby. I do She's going to be telling up. All right. Then I better never hear that as an excuse. Miss uh, Ms. Chang, whoever's the probation officer who supervises her. Um. Yeah, I better never hear that as an excuse. We're clear. Um, Ms. Uh, Walker, uh, I will accept because, you know, they, they direct us in judge school to always give you an opportunity to apologize when you have been contemptuous in court. Um, instead of giving you that straight 20 days I could give you, 
give you the opportunity to apologize. You have come back and apologized. I still don't think you mean it, but I'm gonna let you have that. Uh, but you're gonna uh, do this. I still don't feel like you're a probation candidate, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. And only, only for your mama interceding on your behalf. If it wasn't for your mama, you'd be going back to jail. But yeah, I'm gonna try it. Um, but the first mess up, all of this is gonna come back. First mess up, first probation revocation, first time you come back before me, all of this is gonna come back to my mind. It is. Um, so I'm going to accept your plea of guilty to counts one and five. I'll send you to 12 months to serve two days. Balance of uh, credit for time served. Balance will be probated for you to pay a fine in the amount of three hundred dollars. That's going to be four hundred and forty four dollars with the surcharges. Um, so that's the total. You're to take a family violence intervention program course. That's 24 sessions. Um, and you have to attend all 24 sessions. If you miss more than three, they'll make you start the class all over again. And you have to be able to finish all 24 sessions within the 12 months. You'll do 40 hours of community service. You'll have no violent or harassing contact with Miss Dominique Tremble. And the only reason that's there is because she loved her grandbaby. And that's my gift to her for putting up with your foolishness. Um, counts two, three, and four will merge with count one. Count five will be 12 months probation to um, run concurrent with count one. And no violent, or, I mean, and no um, violations of the laws of the state of Georgia. All right, so now, Miss um, Walker, I'm gonna put you in a breakout room with the probation um, intake expert. Um, Miss Chang, who is now doing intake? Is Mr. Carmichael still doing intake until a certain date? Mr. Carmichael, you still doing intake until a certain date? I'm still here, Your Honor. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Carmichael. I knew y'all weren't going to leave me um, by myself. All right. So, Ms. Walker, I'm going to put you in a breakout room with Mr. Carmichael. Now, I want you to... Where'd she go? He's still on the Zoom, Your Honor. Oh, she just... I want you to ask him all the questions that you need to ask him that involve your situation. So if there's a if you've got a job that you work crazy hours, ask about those things so that he can give you instructions as to all of those things. And the best way to get um, rearrested is to not show up for probation. So please make sure that you attend all of your probation reports um, as directed. If there's trouble doing any of the other things with probation, share that with your probation officer. All right. So let's see. Did she go into the breakout room? Bless her heart. Um, I'm gonna play pray for you, Miss Tremble. Um, that you don't have to end up raising your grandson and that things work out better. Thank you. All right. Take care. 